Hey everyone, my name is Rio, and welcome to the ninth episode of the Indie Game Devlog where I go over the development of my game, Orb. This is a bit of a different episode, since Orb recently hit its one year mark of development. And since it's a special episode, I'm gonna go over an important subject that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time. I'll explain what I mean in a bit, but for now, let's get into it. So far when it comes down to developing games, the two most important pieces of advice I've gotten were start small and don't get too attached to an idea. Now I already haven't followed the first one, so I might as well follow the second one. Well actually I did follow the first piece of advice in the beginning, because Orb did start out relatively small, just being a two level concept that I made in a week. And now it's a game that has gotten kickstarted and has been in development for over a year, with several people helping in its progress. Sorry for the side tangent there. So, the second piece of advice was don't get too attached to an idea. Don't be afraid to change things because 9 times out of 10, your game isn't going to exactly turn out the way that you were imagining it in the beginning. And if you attach yourself too much to an idea, it can prevent you from making some real necessary changes to improve your project. And you might end up cornering yourself creatively. This doesn't really apply to games alone, this really applies to anything in general. So with that, my plan for this episode is going to be to talk about some potential big changes that I might make to the core gameplay and really asking myself if what I'm doing is even working in the first place and is it enjoyable? So let's go over some of these changes. One of the first things I was thinking about was a comment that I got from someone saying to make sure that Orb doesn't just become a walking simulator. And I was thinking of good ways to do that. The first thing that popped into my mind was to introduce some new mechanics that could either speed up the pace or intensity of the game, and uh, I feel like there's three main ways of doing this. I could either add an element of fast paced movement to make sure that the player has to stay alert and use their reflexes to respond in time. Mm. Alternatively I can add some other mechanics to make the puzzles a little more challenging for the players. And last but not least I could add some form of threat to the player to really keep them on their toes. I really want to add some form of threat slash enemy to the game, however I'm not exactly sure on what it would be and how it would work in combination with dimension swapping mechanics. I'm currently going through some potential ideas, however I'm really curious to see what you guys think. If, if you have any good ideas for enemies that could be in the game and work very well, why not leave it in the comments? I'd love to see if you guys have any great ideas. For the past few months I've definitely still been working on the story, and I do think that the story I had works, but the way that I told it certainly needs to be different from the demo. Since like I said in a previous episode, the demo didn't really have a story at all, or at least it wasn't told very well. Now next thing I want to talk about is uh, a big change that might upset some people, but I feel like it's for the better, trust me. So I'm going to just say it and then I'm going to give some explanation to it afterwards, alright? So I'm thinking about changing the later parts of the game where you get a new version of the orb that travels between four dimensions to change that to an orb that travels between either three or again two dimensions. Now this is definitely the biggest example of what I meant by don't get too attached to an idea because I never really stopped to question whether or not it actually worked in the first place. Something I've noticed with the four dimensional tests that I've been making is that there is a lot of wasted space in giving the player four dimensions. Now this is a bad thing from both a design perspective and also from a optimization and gameplay perspective. The optimization in the demo was relatively poor, although now I've definitely been working on it to be better. So the optimization itself shouldn't be the main issue, however from a design perspective this is also kind of bad. One important thing when you're designing anything especially in games and levels, is to make sure that you don't have too much empty space. You always want to have something that can intrigue the player when they're looking at any given point. You don't want to have 10 spaces in a room that look identical. You want to make sure that you look around and the player sees something different. In this case, it's going to be different mechanics all over the place. So if the player is kind of, you know, just there in three different dimensions that all look identical and have nothing new in them, it's kind of just wasted space. So I feel like lowering the number of dimensions could be a lot better. It means that the levels could be more densely packed and it isn't too big of a change to actually make. So I hope that people understand why I'm choosing to do this. 
And I do get that some people have some potential, you know, issues with how that affects the story. So I am going to explain a bit of that. So minor spoiler alert ahead for the full version of the game. It's nothing too major, but if you don't want to know any information at all, you can skip this timestamp. Now in the full version of the game, the player will start off with the first version of the orb in chapter 1, which was what we know as the demo. Followed by a newer version of the orb, which they will get at the end of the chapter, which was supposed to travel between four dimensions instead of two. However, this wasn't the only thing that the newer orb could do. It wasn't just capable of jumping two dimensions further. The jumps that it did make were actually bigger. And in my logic, in the game's logic of interdimensional travel, the further you go from your original dimension, the bigger the differences will be. This would cause for some levels with extreme differences. So it does still work within the story itself. That's not the biggest issue. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about this potential change. I'd love to discuss it with you guys in the comments and on Discord. Now before the episode ends, I do want to introduce one more new mechanic, which isn't necessarily anything about pacing or fundamental changes, but it is a neat little feature that I want to add. It's not 100% done yet, but I do have a little, I've got a few snippets here and there for it. Um, basically, I want to add a system that allows the player to see where everything is within other dimensions. So they will see kind of a ghostly figure or an outline of an object, which then has a color which corresponds to their dimension. I think that this change would really help the flow of the game, since, again, to do with the wasted space, this will make sure that there's a bit more stuff in the levels themselves. And on top of that, I do think that it's going to be more useful for the player, since they don't have to aimlessly wander around traveling through dimensions to find a piece that they need. They can see it now, they just have to go to it. So this is definitely one of my new favorite features that is going to be added soon. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you want to see the next episode, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to see even more updates outside of YouTube, consider joining our Discord. See you in the next one.